Hello everyone and welcome. So in this video I'm going to be breaking down the elements of this render. Mostly how I created a scene, like wrapping low, uh, labels around the bottles, how to do these water puddles, uh, create a dust material and how to create this wrap in here. So let's get started. So let's start by having a look on how to project logos or labels into the bottle. So the first thing you might think is just use the ray project. Here I have the label and the bottle and I just use a ray project on let's say minimum distance. And if we have a look, as you can see, it doesn't work properly. But if we set it to projected rays and vector set to along the z-axis, as you can see, I was getting the stretched look, which is not nice. So what I did to solve that was transfer the normals from the bottle, as you can see. I have the normals here and let me disable that and then I'm promoting them to point normals as you can see I have them like this spreading out and then I can blur the normals and ray project it with the normal and as you can see that fixes the stretching and you can play with the blur iterations of the attribute blur in this case I used it quite a bit but yeah that's how I solved that problem of the stretch look as you can see before and after so now let's have a look on how to do the stair the part uh, rock or neck wrap and the way I'm doing that is by creating a tube and ray projecting it to the bottle then doing some basic UVs and creating a circle and distorting it with a mountain and create doing an edge structure then I can blast away and smooth out the edges uh, from there I'm converting these to I'm converting the UVs to the position as you can see in here assigning the UVs to the position uh, and now I want to bend these randomly in, in, in different sections so the way I'm doing that might not be the best way but it worked for me is creating a line uh, along the top of the the bottle wrap doing a resample in this case I chose four segments and then I'm creating an attribute for each point as you can see if I transfer it to the geometry you can clearly see how that looks I'm doing an attribute transfer and as you can see I have 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.0 and I have a 0 0.3 that just wraps around because this geometry will be connected later on. So then I'm doing an attribute blur to have some smooth transitions and after that I'm iterating and creating in a for each feedback set to count with let's see for fetch feedback and by count and feedback each iteration otherwise we would duplicate the geometry and so let me reset this and remove the visualization and I'm do I'm placing first the the band where it needs to be as you can see right at the top and then I'm B bending randomly with a Fito one and a random function using the the meta import nodes 
uh, plus a seed that I have here at the bottom that I added and between 0 and minus 340 and then I'm blending this is where everything happens so if I remove this as you can see if I I don't need to remove that I just set to no scaling it's bending everything but now if I scale by attribute I'm just bending that specific part of the geometry and the bend attributes is that attribute that we created which is named pt underscore and then the detail iteration can be used to load the attributes so if we have a look at each pass so single pass one two three and four as you can see and some of them i can play with the um, the seed as you can see some of there are some of the regions are more bent than others and i can play with this i can say minus 90 minus 360 oops oh not minus sorry plus so now I have some geometry that is looking straight up I can play with this as you can see this is randomized let me just get back to where I had before which is this then I can use a point deform to get it back to position and then fuse the points soften the normals and that's basically it's how i did this neck crop uh, around the the bottle maybe there are better ways but i'm open to suggestions if you have another idea yeah okay for the water puddles as you can see i have a plane between below the table just a little bit below and scaled up and then if i disable this and go to the camera and change the material let me just remove the transmission and set the base color to reds you can see what i mean let's have a look and by the way, as you can see, it's rendering the full resolution. So I'm going to press D and go to render and say viewport size. And now I can render faster, as you can see. So I have a displacement in here that I created with some noises. And I'm loading it as an image file. Then using a, a smooth step to flatten the displacement, flatten the, the image to be more black or white and then I'm uh, connecting it to the displacement as, and as you can see it's creating these water bottles from the plane that is just a simple plane that is below the surface and if I change it again to be transmissive you will start hopefully seeing the the water puddles it's subtle but it's there and i can show you how i created the the water puddles noise so i'm starting with the grids unwrapping to create the uvs then i'm subdividing it quite a bit promoting the UVs to, to point attribute so I can use it in a point vop and in here I'm starting by creating these soft dots mask as you can see and I am uh, distorting the UVs with the uh, turbulence noise as you can see because by default it looks like this so these soft dots that i have in here 
This is just a mask to contain the effect. Then I'm using two noises. This is the first one, which is a turbulent no turbulence noise I set to alligator. Then I'm fitting the range. And then I have a Voron noise, as you can see, Voronoi noise. And it's creating this effect. Then I'm maxing the two noises, so an additive mode, and multiplying it by the initial mask. This gives me this result. Then I can create an output in here and create a copnet. And if I go to the composite view, I'm just doing an attribute import, labs attribute import, selecting the geometry, the target output resolution, and then just uh, rendering to this the current frame. And as you can see, we have this displacement texture that I am using again in Solaris to create the puddle effect. As you can see, it's subtle, but it's there. It's creating this nice effect on the surface. So let's have a look on how to create this dust effect on top of objects. So I'm mixing two materials, one that is the, the glass and the other one that is the dust. I can show you how the dust looks. It's just a, a noisy grey material. Oops. As you can see, I have a unified noise with a high frequency. Oh, not this one. Uh, this one. With a very high frequency. Then I'm contrasting the noise with a smooth step and mixing between black and uh, dark gray or light gray. And I'm mixing. As a mixing factor, as you can see in here in the materials, I am using. Let me show you if I connect this in here. So this is the the color noise of the glass, and as a mixing factor, I'm using this one in here. As you can see and then I'm multiplying this texture which is just too much and everywhere which doesn't make sense I'm multiplying that with the normal the Y component of the normal and that looks something like this and I also slightly distorted it with a fractal as you can see, I'm adding to the normal this fractal and then uh, extracting the Y component and using a ramp again to contrast the effect. And with the previous texture, I'm just multiplying and get this result in here. And this is the mixing factor of my materials both the the glass and the dust and if we put everything together we would get something like this so as you can see here in more detail so yeah guys that was basically it i hope you have learned something new as always you can grab the the full scene on patreon and I hope to see you soon. Thank you.